Hello, and welcome to the spring edition of NTV. I'm Mike McClure. And I'm Sharon Bennett, coming to you from the City of Seattle's Emergency Operations Center. In the event of an emergency or disaster, this place becomes the command center for the city's response. And experts say it's not a matter of if, but rather when the big one will hit the Seattle area. In recent years, major quakes hit San Francisco, Los Angeles, and Kobe. When a mild earthquake hit the Puget Sound region right on the heels of the devastating Kobe quake, the urgency of preparedness took center stage. On April 26, the city will take part in a statewide disaster preparedness drill to test its readiness and citywide coordination. Individual jurisdictions like Seattle will run, uh, based on the thin scenario the state devises, we will develop our own issues and work on responding and work on, on uh, the interaction that occurs between agencies and departments. The second thing that happens is that uh, the state will participate as a player as well and will feed general information to us. But really the purpose of the exercise uh, and our purpose in preparing for it is, is not solely limited to the state's portion of the exercise. It's really uh, one of our annual efforts at, at um, devising uh, the best response that we can to a disaster. On a personal level, if you haven't already done so, it's a good idea to sit down with your family today and decide what to do in the event of a disaster. Good resource information is available from the American Red Cross and even in your local telephone book. But how prepared are we at work? If you're indoors, most people at least know to get away from windows and either get under a solid object like a desk or hang on to it. Brace yourself in a doorway or against an interior wall. Heightened awareness in recent years has made earthquakes and ergonomics key considerations when City Light purchases furniture for office remodels and for the new building. And we have an overhead bin here. This locks into the panel system, uh, similar to what I showed you with the cantilever support. Uh, these doors are fairly heavy and lockable, and when kept closed will help you know, keep everything in. If if we ever have a, or, you know, prevents things from sliding out or falling off. And on this case right here, we've got a low wall dividing two workstations. This is a panel mount system here. Most of all these, uh, these work surfaces are held in with the cantilever uh, supports in the middle. And then you've got a full end panel here, which supports the, uh, furniture and it's pretty well adjusted and then there's a bracket that on the inside that will hold this in and attach it to this panel. All City Light line trucks like this one used by Lee Simpkins and his crew are equipped with basic necessities radio communications, first aid kits, toilets, extra water, fire extinguishers and even portable generators. The crews usually have food and a change of clothing on the trucks as well. At a minimum, all City Light trucks have radio communications and first aid kits. Office workers should also have emergency supplies at your desk and in your vehicle if your job takes you out into the field. And some of the things that they could put into these kits would be water and food, non-perishable food. They could rotate these out on a regular basis so they don't go bad. Um, and then things like flashlights, um, a transistor radio with extra batteries that would also need to be replenished from time to time, um, good solid sturdy shoes because it'll probably um, be lots of debris around after an earthquake, um, pry bars and other tools that somebody might need. Um, and if you just assemble all these things, uh, medications is another thing that you would want to have on hand. Assemble all these into a tote and keep it there. Um, and again, have one of those at home so that you know that your family is taken care of. Um, and then also have one at work so that you're always prepared no matter where you are for an earthquake. Once you're sure that you and your family are safe, what will be expected of you on the job? First and foremost, City Light understands that the safety of City Light employees' families comes first. In addition, em employees will be expected to use their judgment in determining how to respond to an emergency or a disaster. It's not always possible to tell what will happen during an emergency or a disaster, so you have to use your best judgment to respond. 
It is important for employees to work safely and be calm in, the response, in response to emergencies. You can be sure that many City Light employees will be needed in the aftermath of a disaster to help restore electricity. Office workers should follow the instructions they receive for evacuations and the directions they receive from their supervisors. In addition, there will be floor monitors available to assist them. Field workers should take the time to assess the damage in the field, injuries to their workers, and also to see if there's any other damage to the city's infrastructure. They should then attempt to contact their supervisor, their headquarters, or the power control center as appropriate. Field workers, particularly line workers and distribution workers, should either wait for instructions from the power control center or contact the power con control center as soon as possible. Supervisors should remember that employees will be looking to them for leadership. Where appropriate, supervisors should evacuate staff to a pre-assigned location. They should count heads to make sure that everyone on their staff is accounted for, and they should coordinate with, their, with other supervisory and management staff to assess damage and determine the best course of action to take given the situation in response to the disaster. Unlike earthquakes, some disasters can be avoided by human intervention. In the past few years, and this winter too, some areas of our state have been hit hard by flooding rivers. But thanks to cooperation and coordination, the Cedar River was not one of them. In mid-February, the combination of heavy rains and melting snow caused a rapid rise in the elevation in Chester Morse Lake at Cedar Falls. Working closely with the water department, City Light initiated a controlled spill to bring down the level of the lake. This captured the increased flow for power generation and minimized damage downstream. The water was spilled through the spill valve at the bottom of the dam and the notch at the top. If City Light waited until the water level rose closer to the top and then opened the floodgates, there was sure to be considerable damage downstream in Renton. The spill began on February 19th and lasted seven days until the runoff into the lake reached the point where the generation matched the inflow. By controlling the water level as the lake rose, Renton went unscathed. And King County even issued an award of appreciation to the Water Department for meritorious service in controlling the river flow. Recognition was also the order of the day at a recent reception honoring upward mobility participants. Concluding their six-month assignments, Patricia Hill, Kari Lundquist, and Nancy Storms were presented with certificates by Superintendent Gary Zarker. And it was time for congratulations to Ann Albertson and Laverne Glover, who are just beginning their assignments in the 12th cycle of the Upward Mobility Program. Ann will spend six months as an electric service representative trainee at the South Service Center, and Laverne will be an electrical engineering specialist assistant trainee. I think I'll be a nice change from what I've been doing because I've always worked in credit on delinquent accounts that's more customer service oriented, and I think it'll give me a different aspect of how customers perceive city light and solve problems. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. In the spirit of safety and prevention of tragic accidents, City Light recently conducted an exercise in trench rescue. Working with the fire department, field safety coordinator Young Wynn organized the exercise to increase employee awareness of proper trenching techniques to avoid accidents. The exercise simulated a cave-in and the role of the fire department's special unit located at Fire Station 14 on 4th Avenue South. The fire department lieutenant emphasized that prevention is the key because once a cave-in occurs, the odds are not in favor of the worker in the trench. The actual rescue time can take anywhere from 30 minutes to several hours. To go up the exercise today with the uh, fire department, we try to save life and uh, also, uh, you know, let the employee know that they, the, the dead, you know, raise are really high if the, the trench came in and, um, Help them aware about us and, uh, and hope, you know, nothing will happen in the future. But if it happens, we are ready to rescue and we hope it will make a difference. It's clear why safety is one of our corporate goals. And speaking of corporate goals, technology has been identified as one of the keys to achieving our goals. In February, more than 200 employees attended City Light's first technology conference. Work groups from throughout the utility shared their technology needs with each other. 
The next step is to develop a strategic plan to integrate needs and solutions throughout the utility. So we are trying to bring the technology needs and the solution for these plans so we could look at an integrated approach, eliminate the red redundancy so we don't reinvent the wheel or do things in, uh, twice. Uh, the other approach also to find some cost saving. A technology that City Light has been testing since August is video conferencing using equipment on loan from EPRI, the Electric Power Research Institute. Now City Light has its own equipment and is setting up a link with the Skagit. So people in Seattle could talk with the people in Skagit and people in Skagit could reach the people in Seattle without them leaving their power plants or their office to come and talk about issue. They could resolve them in, uh, in, uh, in a video conferencing meeting. As you may have read in Network, this is the last monthly edition of NTV. A recent employee communications assessment showed that NTV was not readily accessible to many employees. The Corporate Communications Division will use video for other employee communications in the future. We have enjoyed bringing you news about City Light and hope that NTV has been informative and entertaining. On behalf of the entire NTV crew and all of the NTV hosts, thank you for your support over the past two and a half years. For NTV, I'm Henry Yates. For NTV, I'm Dave Daniel. I'm Stephen Thrush from this gadget. From the City Light right away in Kirkland, this is Ed Marshall. From the Emergency Operations Center, I'm Jalen Smith. So from this super good sense building site near Lake Union, I'm Mark Sullivan. And I'm Larry Johnson. And I'm Terry Kakita. For NTV, I'm Mike McClure. And I'm Sharon Bennett saying goodbye for now. Bye-bye.